would be talking about uh, using grouting as one of the uh, ground improvement techniques uh, in this uh, lecture. Uh, this is one of the common ground improvement techniques. Uh, it has been used frequently for underground uh, structures as well as foundation constructions. The process of grouting consists of filling the pores of the cavity in soil or rock with a liquid form material to decrease permeability and to improve the shear strength by increasing the cohesion when it is set. The cement based grout mixes are commonly used for gravelly layers or fissure rock treatment. But the suspension grain size may be too big to penetrate sand or silt sand layers. Uh, what happens is that in many cases when you trow, uh, put the grout material the particle size is very important and uh, if the uh, whatever you are trying to grout it should get into this uh, soil system and then stabilize the whole area it has to occupy all the voids. And um, in some cases when the grain size distribution of the soil itself is very low then it is possible that uh, the suspension uh, may not get into the system and what we do is that we try to go for chemical or organic grout mixes uh, which is quite uh, useful in those conditions. And uh, nowadays we have even ultra fine grout mixes which are quite useful and uh, they are all very useful for increasing the performance of hydraulic base grout for soil treatment like in the sense that if you are trying to um, use this uh, material uh, it is going to be very useful in trying to reduce the permeability and uh, increase strength and all that. Uh, I would like to just uh, sh show you a typical photo in which uh, sandy gravel is there initially but then if you just mix a uh, ultra fine cement uh, grout if you have it and remove the soil mass it is like this you know it is so strong. So, it is like a gravelly mass could be converted into a very strong mass and uh, it is quite effective particularly when uh, the things many complexities are there and when you are trying to stabilize the existing structures or when you are trying to construct something next to the uh, adjacent, uh, adjacent to the existing structures. Uh, to understand further on this we can classify the grout mixes into uh, some four classification groups mortar and paste such as cement to fill the holes or the open cracks. Then suspensions such as ultra fine cement to seal and strengthen sand and joints. Solutions such as water glass and emulsions such as chemical grout. The operational limits of the different grout mix are dependent on the type of soils and the grain side distribution of the soil. For example, like if the size is too coarse the mortar is sufficient like, but when you have a finer size say for example 10 mm uh, suspension with regular cement is alright. But then here in this case is a suspension with ultra fine cement then this is a water glass solution and in a very fine uh, materials like clays and all that uh, you need to go for chemical uh, solutions. The way that we classify some of this material is that like uh, in terms of the action they have you know in sometimes when you put the grout it can it can lead to ground displacement like it can form some sort of column and displace the soil there. Otherwise without it is one is with ground displacement the other one is without uh, displacement and uh, without ground displacement again it can be classified into just penetration like say for example there is some void it can just uh, fill it up or penetrate that uh, area and then fill it up just like that. Then even sometimes bulk filling like if there is a big cavity in the underground you can use the grout to fill up that uh, particular uh, mid, uh, space. Again in pen penetration we we have what is called permeation grouting and also fissure or contact grouting like say for example you try to uh, only you know uh, without disturbing or without uh, too much of ground disturbance you would like to uh, see that the gaps are closed whether there are fissures or voids. Then bulk filling as I just mentioned it is a for example you have underground cav cavities then uh, this is the way that one can fill it up you should know the exact uh, volume 
In fact, uh, you know that uh, GPR and other techniques can be used to find out the cavities in soil areas. In fact, in slopes there, are, there could be some problems. So, one can really use the grouting to do this uh, filling and see that uh, it does not lead to any stability problems. With ground displacement, uh, it leads to some sort of hydraulic fracturing because you are uh, pushing the material and also compaction. So, it really densifies the material that is one thing. Uh, when you are trying to design, uh, you should look for certain things particularly in the design of grouting it has like first thing is a preliminary design in which uh, you plan very well to see if the things are feasible. So, you need to find uh, have adequate investigation uh, to carry it right in the beginning which includes characterization of ground and ground water and identification of fractured rock. So, for example, you are trying to characterize the or the um, area in a rocky uh, slope of a, you know you would like to see that uh, whether the uh, slope is stable. So, and then it has any underground or water resources in a patched water or whatever. So, one should be able to understand uh, what exactly is the type of rock uh, or uh, soil or whatever then un understand what are the water table levels and all that and identification of the fractured rock. So, if the fractured rock exists it leads to stability problems. So, how do you fill up all those fractures and cracks joints and all that. So, you should also be able to know about the degree of weathering for the rock granular soils also should be known. So, for example, uh, what is the type of soil you have alluvium or sand or silts etcetera and you should also have information about natural cavities and uh, or galleries like mine workings, tunnels, storage galleries there could be many things like openings that could be there underground one should be very ca uh, careful once you know some of these information then it is possible to go ahead with a de detailed design uh, which is again somewhat uh, very tricky uh, because the thing is that here many things are unknown in the sense that uh, um, it is not uh, unlike other ground improvement techniques it is not easy to uh, verify like uh, whether the uh, uh, you know uh, systems are satisfactory or not in a clear uh, sense uh, except that you see that of course, one can do some sort of uh, testing particularly in the uh, plain ground one can do some tests uh, like uh, uh, static one penetration test and all that for Im improvement of bearing capacity and all that. But one should be very careful because uh, uh, it is a very uh, complicated mechanism here uh, because though the objective is simple that it has to fill up voids and also increase the strength the way it does and also the way it, it is going to be effective is something that uh, there is uh, one should be very careful and uh, but it has been very, very effective in many case studies that uh, we will discuss uh, because there are many problems that one can uh, solve using this technique and there is a possibility that many other techniques may not be very uh, comfortable with this you know you cannot do the conventional other ground improvement techniques. Uh, so, in these cases definitely this uh, technique of grouting is uh, very helpful to a great deal. So, the design has to be somewhat more careful because you need to have all this basic information and come out with essentially the design consists of like what type of material uh, you need to uh, choose as a grout then what should be the spacing what should be the pressure there are many methods of grouting that we have you must be able to identify the uh, type of met, um, the type of grouting the type of uh, uh, installation the type of uh, like quality control you are going to have and all that. So, you one, one may even try to do a preliminary study on how it can be helpful in a small area and then extend it to a larger area because you need to have experience with the technique then once you have the experience with the technique then it is quite easy uh, or to adopt. So, in the investigation methods particularly when you are trying to do for gr uh, the grouting you must be able to uh, have a direct inspection you must go for drilling uh, to locate and determine local conditions. Then take core samples for laboratory tests. Drilling with drilling data to record located fixtures like you know uh, data simultaneously when you are drilling you can get, get to locate fixtured, ro fixtured rocks 
zones, voids and interface between structure and surrounding ground. Say for example, sometimes uh, the interface is a critical issue in many of the uh, problems. So, you must be able to get all that information and we also have what is called borehole logging uh, with borehole TVs and can uh, cameras and all that. In fact, uh, if you are trying to look for a um, uh, underground uh, uh, pro problems or issues, even nowadays you have borehole cameras which can give you information about the type of soil that exists and all that. So, people are also employing non-destructive geophysical investigations, uh, seismic resistivity, then uh, water testing, particularly you can do you know for example, uh, if you are trying to find out the permeability of the rock or a soil because you know the objective is essentially to find out this pore size here because if the pore size is bigger you would like to see that what is its impact and how to use proper uh, uh, grouting method here. So, the permeability is quite important. Then you should be able to have the underground flow how it uh, moves say for example, in a particular area you know the underground mo what movement of water could be in some localized uh, conditions one should be able to understand that uh, only that area needs to be stabilized. So, many things you know uh, say for example, the velocity of the flow underground also influences your uh, choice of the grout because the grout material should not get washed away when you are trying to do the uh, uh, grouting. So, temperature measurements are also important then pumping test to assess the initial hydraulic conditions as I just mentioned grouting is very effective when uh, the water table is there and all that. So, one needs to examine some of these conditions very carefully the initial hydraulic conditions are to be known as well. Uh, there are certain design guidelines how it can be done. Uh, so, as I just mentioned the grout, grout volume is an important parameter because if there is a lot of area to be stabilized finally, you have to pay the, to the contractor in terms of the grout volume that you have he has placed. Uh, for stabilization and uh, if you do not have any control then it is very difficult and you should also have a somewhat good design basis which depends on ground porosity, the geometry of the treated so zone, grout hole spacing, stage length and total depth to be treated. So, one needs to have a rough idea good idea of some of these uh, factors uh, such as porosity, the geometry then the grout hole spacing, length and depth. There are some guidelines uh, to what extent a particular area is groutable. Uh, so, for example, they were what they, they define it as n factor which is an n value which is nothing but the d 15 of the soil divided by the d 65 of the grout. You can see that uh, you are trying to compare and see that the size of the uh, grout size of the soil particle is uh, somewhat we know the size of the particle, but the d 65 size you know you are trying to 65 percentile of the grout you are taking it is much smaller than the d 15 size of the soil particle you know then only the grout can penetrate is it not. The grout can penetrate if the size is going to be very small. So, you try to compare with the d 65 size of the grout and also the d 15 of the soil and if the ratio is going to be very high it is good. So, grouting is considered feasible if n is more than 24 and not feasible and n is less than 11. So, there is some sort of criteria given in Mitchell and Cutty it is a review of uh, review of ground point techniques paper. Uh, some people uh, mention this type of other type of uh, classification where they call it N c and then they try to compare with d 10 of the soil d 95 and if it is N c is more than 11 it is ok, but it is less than 6 it is not ok. So, uh, but then uh, some more you know people have been working on these lines particularly when you try to uh, do a very big project say for example, uh, there is a big dam at the dam coming or some uh, rock field dam or whatever dam is coming up. Then uh, you need to have the foundation should be stable uh, there should not be uh, seepage uh, in the foundation there should not be uh, bearing capacity failures in the foundation and all that how do you handle that that is only possible if you have proper understanding of the pore size, the grout size and some of this information. So, realizing the importance of uh, some of these works people have done lot of uh, work on this and they gave some sort of criteria. 
In fact, this is one more such thing that uh, a new n value has been proposed actually which says that n is nothing but it should be able to compare the d10 of the soil and also the d90 of the grout. If the ratio is good, it is fine plus he talks about you know because uh, in the previous uh, uh, methods that we saw they only talk about uh, grain side distribution of the soil and the grain side distribution of the grout. It will not take care of the water cement ratio of the cement, it will also do not take care of the uh, fines content some pressure grouting pressure and the relative density of the soil. So, these persons these researchers have given some sort of relationship again it is site specific and empirical, but then they recognize the importance of the important variables like water cement ratio then the pressure relative density and all that. Because if the relative density of the soil is going to be higher uh, which is which means that it is more dense it you cannot grout it that easily. Similarly, if the pressure is higher grout pressure definitely you can grout more. Uh, water cement ratio if the water cement ratio is higher grout can flow easily. Uh, so, some of these variables are there and um, they got based on the work that they did uh, they made a some sort of empirical uh, equation like one can fit this sort of equations in uh, practice and uh, find whichever is working you know you can take lot of data uh, of the site and then look at yeah we have identified the water cement ratio as a variable and pressure as a variable and uh, relative density and fc as a variable. So, what is that equation one can give for this one can do some sort of study and a similar st one study one study that says is that like k1 k2 values are in the range of 0.5 here k2 is 0.01 inverse kpa. So, because the k2 is coming here so p is coming here so dr is a uh, what is called percentage. So, you have to norm and put in a proper dimensions here. So, uh, that way k1 is a it does not have units k2 has units of 0 0.1 inverse kpa. So, these are some values and uh, again soil is considered to be groutable when n is greater than 28 and not groutable when n is less than 28. So, this is some sort of criteria uh, these people have and uh, this is something that is quite useful to go ahead with design. So, again there are also what is that uh, different types of grouting we have like one is called as I just mentioned penetration is possible, displacement is possible, compaction is possible and grouting of voids you know bigger voids are there is possible, jet grouting is another way of doing. Uh, as I just mentioned you have a pressure unit here and uh, suppose you are trying to fill up the cracks or the fractures in the particular rock or whatever. Penetration is one easier way like you know the grout comes and then fill up, uh, fills up all these uh, spaces right. Then the second other one would be that permeation like it just uh, the whole area you know it per permeates in all directions the flow and then stabilizes. Other way would be displaces like it is uh, typical in a compaction grouting it displaces means it densifies the soil that is next to the this thing. Uh, next uh, next to the bulb or whatever you know you can say that uh, you have a uh, material uh, the um, uh, densified material here the soil next to it gets densified here. Then you have another one called jet grouting where again this is again a displacement process. So, where there is some action of the jet that comes into picture here it rotates and all that we will see some sort of videos now. Um, uh, the typical applications are say for example, you have a dam and uh, you do not want the water to flow like this because uh, if you do not have you know water storage otherwise will not be there you know you are supposed to have this uh, uh, dam for about uh, you know whatever you know water should be stored, but if you have a very weak uh, alluvium uh, soil like this then the, pro the uh, problem is that the grouting you know uh, uh, the permeation is there and you will not have water at all here on the upstream side. So, what we do is that we grout this material so that there is no water flow and then the head of uh, uh, head in the uh, dam is maintained. Then the other one is that leveling structure or strengthening foundation. So, for example, 
there is a possibility that the foundation tilt is there. So, you would like to stabilize it. So, put some sort of grout injections into the system and so that it will not repair for, uh, get damaged further. Another one was that the like you know you are trying to make a tunnel here right. Suppose I water, water tunnel or anything subway underpass or whatever then the area you know it should not cave in when you are trying to put the tunnel the front front end should not get caved in. So, you try to grout this material and then complete this process because otherwise it will collapse like this there is a very risky operation. Then in some cases grouting for subway excavation also it can do like this uh, so that the at least the area next to that is somewhat stable right. Then uh, we have in specialized applications what is called ground anchors and uh, for example, the ground anchors will consist of a anchored zone here we call it this uh, this called this again a to increase the passive resistance we try to create a bulb here this is a reinforcement like it is an anchor rod at the end of the anchor rod we have some pressure bulbs to increase the passive resistance and uh, this is also called uh, so grouted anchors we call it ok. And uh, filling up of uh, caustic case say for example, as I just mentioned there could be some uh, openings that are there because of uh, certain um, geological anomalies like uh, dissolution of uh, uh, material from the underground because of certain uh, reactions. The possibility is that you have uh, cavities then you have to fill it up. So, grouting is another alternative. So, what I would like to do is that I will just try to show some videos at this stage. So, that uh, you will understand how the process is done. So, this is uh, um, one thing this is actually jet grout columns one can get uh, as has 2 to 3 meters you can see that and uh, they will show you how it is done. So, for example, a drill bit jet it is called jet grout D system you, you know the water is gushing out of this. The way the process is done we will see that now you have a cement tanker cement is fed to the screw feeder. can see that it is all mixed at some 3 30 rpm. The grout is delivered in the pipes, then there is a high pressure pump you know to control the pressures actually. You have a control panel and all that. Grout is then pumped to the the rig allowed to go into the ground. So, this is how the final result looks like you can have a like you know it can be like a similar to or a stone columns or something you have very uh, so I must thank uh, Keller for giving me this uh, video. We also have some more uh, uh, material um, jet grouting is another one here the way it does you can just see that 
single uh, jet grouting in a single flow it's one like you can just see that the way it does you have a grout and air coming into air water grout all three of them simultaneously then this is an jet grouting what we see now will be on the compaction grouting so for example if you are trying to increase the bedding capacity as I just mentioned it is called displacement grouting I mean uh, there is soil is displaced and there is a compaction zone created you can see that this is the way it is done. So, this is an important application. We also have chemical grouting as I just mentioned when the size of the uh, like okay, then you are trying to feed that uh, So, uh, these are all different types of uh, materials and as I just mentioned these are all the different types of applications of course, of applications could be too many. Uh, so, we should be able to understand um, what are the different types of uh, suspensions or grouts you have uh, since you have seen that uh, there are f uh, 3 or 4 types here. Um, so, for example, here the uh, as I just mentioned. Uh, you can have soil suspensions the uh, the state of the grout could be in the form of a suspension it could be in the form of a liquid or even it could be in the form of aerated emulsions or foams. Uh, grout type if it is there say for example, suspension type is unstable and stable I will discuss that later what is stable and unstable. Um, what it means is that you have a, a suspension and uh, the particle uh, you know be before uh, you know all that material should reach the required depth of that uh, material the moment uh, you suspension all the particles will be in uh, moving and all the particles should move the desired depth and then, then only start setting. Uh, so, before that it should not set. So, if all the particles start setting only after they reach the desired depth we call it uh, stable and uh, that is the reason sometimes cement may not be you know if you take a grout type if you use cement may not be completely like that. So, if you are able to have bentonite plus uh, cement or a deflocculated bentonite definitely it is a stable suspension. Then you also have what is called uh, so in this uh, particular classification of grout materials. Uh, what we see is that uh, we have suspensions, we have liquids and we have aerated emulsions and uh, say if the grout type is cement like uh, it, it is somewhat unstable in the sense that as I just mentioned uh, the uh, suspension should be able to start settling only after reaching the desired areas it should not settle in between. So, that we consider as stable and if it is cement normally you know it little quicker so, there is a possibility that uh, it can form uh, you know uh, aggregations aggregate, aggregations in a faster manner compared to say for example, you have bentonite plus cement if you add bentonite could uh, prevent the tendency. So, cement is quite useful in the case of uh, fissures 
say for example, if they have rock, for, uh, jointed rock and all that, it is quite useful. <coughs> then how do you control the uh, grout, grout refusal pressure? So, we apply you know you will be able to fill up all the things and then if the pressure uh, is uh, you know stops then you can say that it, it is not necessary. Then say for example, in a particular case this is a very interesting example here uh, particularly given in a particular uh, textbook. Uh, the relative cost we will see that it is a 4.2 factor, but if you use uh, bentonite plus cement or bentonite plus uh, deflocculate bentonite it is 1 or it is 0.8 to 1 which means that the it is going to be uh, compared to cement uh, bentonite plus cement is going to be cheaper right. Then as I just mentioned depending on the cases say for example, even the uh, uh, bentonite suspensions they are all quite useful when the permeability is somewhat uh, lower you know up to the range of minus 4 in the case of sands and gravels. But then beyond that uh, as I just said uh, they, there is a possibility that uh, the clay clay type will get in and uh, then you need to really you know with the permeability going to be minus 6, minus 5 you need to go for chemical products like liquids which say for example, sodium silicate gels you know gel is nothing it is a uh, formation of uh, hard, hardened masses ok. So, sodium silicate gels or organic resins could be used and you can see that they are going to be little expensive uh, when you compare with this uh, particular you know cement 200 kg and bentonite 30 kg combination you know if you try to take it as one unit uh, the just using cement alone could be uh, a little expensive and uh, but when you are trying to use chemical products definitely the chemical products are going to be expensive but then the situation in a particular case demands that that you should go for this type of material with the particle size is not really uh, amenable then it is very important ok. So, then there is a possibility that uh, this is one and aerated emulsions like cement foams and organic foams are also used to fill up cavities and high water flows and it is just the filling till the uh, grout control is like you know what we do in this case is that we try to actually um, true you know people do lot of laboratory studies also. So, for example, you add uh, uh, one plus this much of cement and this much of bentonite or this much of chemical product and all that once should do lot of uh, uh, analysis laboratory testing and then go for some sort of uh, uh, criteria otherwise it becomes very difficult. So, one can really do some sort of experiments essentially what we are trying to do is that you should take an undisturbed sample from the soil uh, the material and then you are essentially looking for strength improvement and permeability reduction. So, you can try to uh, take which amount uh, whatever is a percentage of there are different chemical products here we have and depending uh, which whichever gives the best uh, performance according to our criteria one can choose and then use it in the field with the adequate margin of safety ok. So, even these cavities and high water flows also have the same issue that uh, you need to fill up the uh, cavities that is uh, one thing. So, you can see that these are also going to be uh, uh, cement forms are somewhat cheaper, but organic forms are expensive. So, essentially the objective here is to solve the uh, uh, difficulties that we have. So, essentially what we should do is that uh, this are all uh, uh, achieved in a proper manner without sacrificing its uh, suitability as a material both in terms of permeability reduction as well as strength improvement. So, a few more examples here like we have seen a compaction grouting it is a, a it involves the injection of a thick slurry under pressure into the soil mass cons it consolidates and densifies the materials in place the injected grouse mass occupies the white space created by the pressure densification. So, pump pressure as transmitted through the low mobility grout produces compaction by displacing the soil at depth until resisted by the weight of the overlying soils. That is why you just see the formation of uh, bulbs and uh, strong substances and uh, <coughs> when injected into the dense materials or bedrock compaction grout remains somewhat confined since the surrounding metal is quite dense. However, when injected into the under consolidated or poorly compacted soils grout is able to push these materials aside. 
So, when grout treatment is applied on a grid pattern, the result is improved compaction of displaced soils, greater uniformity of the treated soil mass. As a secondary benefit, the resulting grout columns and add strength in the vertical axis as a typical grout composition exit those of the surrounding soils. We have seen that uh, presentation by uh, the Keller in which you know the objective is essentially to treat the uh, ground in the form of a uh, grid or whatever and improve the bearing capacity. But you also have the formation of columns here. The possibility is that the compressive strength of the uh, grout could be much higher than the uh, the higher than the, uh, the surrounding soil, and that can be used as a basis in which one can evaluate the bearing uh, uh, capacity improvement or uh, settlement reduction. This is a very important point here. So, the compaction grouting applications include densification of foundation soils, raising and relieving of structures and uh, foundation elements, mitigation of liquefaction potential, augmentation of pile capacity and pile repair and densification of utility trenches backfills. So, for example, you know that the piles that you have designed may not have adequate uh, strength or capacity, then how do you go about uh, repairing it? or improve the capacity of the piles. So, this is a very good uh, remedial uh, uh, measure in the sense or restoration measure when things are uh, you know when it, there are no other ways of doing it. Although densification of foundation soils subject to long settlement remains to be the principal application, ground improvement methods incorporating compaction grouting methods have become in increasingly accepted by engineering community as a means of mitigating lick fiber soils influencing ex existing facilities. As I just mentioned uh, since uh, you have an excellent equipment and quality control like you know you have machine control the possibility is that yes uh, this method can uh, give uh, good uh, uh, information I mean improvements that is what it means. Uh, the other advantage is that in the inherent in the grout, uh, grouting process the capacity to work in the areas of limited access. So, for example, there are some places where you do not have access to like you know how do you construct uh, uh, certain approach to do certain repair job. So, when you want to do a repair job an approach for that particular location is also quite important and um, the advantage is that sometimes the you know uh, the grouting equipment this uh, sort of uh, grouting can make it. Uh, 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 it is possible that with grouting you can make uh, corrections in places where there is a limited access as well which is a very useful uh, uh, advantage in many uh, issues many let us say for example many urban can, urban areas. Uh, as I just mentioned we have another type what is called permeation grouting it is a term used to describe ground treatment method in which grout is injected into a porous medium without disturbing the original structure as I said it is just to fill up the pore voids and it just essentially fills up the pores and joints uh, so that <coughs> the pores and joints could be filled up in a proper way using permeation and grouting. And uh, the advantage as I just mentioned are that it has enhanced bearing pressure and also the improvement of excavation character in sands and reduction of liquefaction potential. I will give a small example uh, this is you know what is called a running you know sand which is like you know add water it starts flowing you know. So, for example, there is a water table uh, there is a water flow and the uh, sands continues to move away you know default because sand cannot take any uh, uh, you know it does not have cohesion and uh, the possibility is that it just runs down the slope. So, when you treat with uh, permeation grouting uh, say for example, this is uh, imagine that this is a condition next to a foundation. So, you have a foundation at the top and because of that uh, say for in a it is in a hilly, hilly slope and then you have a foundation at the top and you the possibility is that the uh, foundation area is now exposed and if there is a rain, rain the possibility is that the whole uh, foundation soil gets washed away. The solution would be in those cases is that uh, you have to construct a retaining wall which does not allow the uh, uh, sand to go out, but the other area would be so that way a, a stepped retaining wall may be necessary in some cases, but then if you are able to use 
a micro uh, cement and permeate it with uh, in this area the possibility is that it could be stronger you know because of the improved cohesion and uh, uh, you know it does not allow the water to just flow like that. So, it is impermeable. So, with that uh, condition the possibility is that it could be much uh, uh, stronger and uh, it could lead to even savings in cost. So, for example, in uh, retaining wall may be uh, necessary or even not necessary depending on uh, the improvement in strength you get or it can definitely reduce the cost of retaining wall in some cases. And uh, people say for example, if you test the unconfined compression test of this material or this material which is treated with uh, permeation grouting. See permeation grouting is just a cement slurry except that it has filled up all the voids. So, it can also bind all the particles and if it can increase the strength in this manner uh, definitely it is uh, going to be very advantageous and uh, it leads to a lot of improvement in shear strength reduction permeability all, all, all these advantages are inherent in this permeation grouting. Uh, in fact, people use many types of uh, particulate grouts see the like as a I was trying to say that um, the particle size is very important and it can be from cement, fly ash, lime or any other material and um, they have a hardening process which is a function of time like you know the hardening is like it sets for some time then uh, the, uh, the strength increases if you wait say for example, the shear strength or the unconfined compression strength or whatever it varies with it increases with time. because uh, the uh, many of these uh, pr materials are you know the cement they, their time their uh, you know the response is time, uh, time dependent and they have a pozzolanic action as we discussed earlier. And uh, these materials can fill up pores, but then uh, the if uh, the I mean uh, like we also discussed some sort of criteria you know if the pore size is going to be smaller then it is not going to be effective. Like as I just mentioned we discussed a couple of criteria to uh, uh, you know uh, um, have a understanding of what should be the suspension size and what should be the uh, depending on the particle size of the soil what should be the suspension, suspension size. A, a rule of the thumb is that the effective uh, particle diameter in the grout suspension should be less than the diameter of the pore or joint aperture by a factor 5 you know like we also discuss some of these things in the factor called N and the slurry grout mixes used for permeation grouting are designed primarily to promote passage of the grout particles into porous medium. So, we are trying to really see the grain size of the slurry and uh, we try to see that it matches or satisfies certain criteria and to see that it uh, has certain relationship with the pore aperture size of the mid, the uh, the grain size will match with the pore size of the uh, existing soil or the rock if the there is a joint. So, st steps are taken to assure that the grout particles are properly dispersed in the grout also like sometimes you may have to have a dispersing agents like you know to uh, see that the it is stable. Uh, both high speed mixing and uh, wet weathering, wetting agents are used to break up clumps and aggregations of grout particles that would cause the grout to have a larger apparent grain size than the actual size of the slurry. So, we try to have uh, some sort of uh, agents which will see that the uh, clumps or the aggregations are not are not there and uh, water content is adjusted in the mix design to control the mean free path between the slurry particles ok. So, other important thing is that the water content should be sufficient to see that water is available everywhere in the grout than simply having water for enough hydration. So, the objective here is to see that the water is there distributed well distributed in the complete uh, grout and uh, so that is the way that water content is given rather than uh, just for say for example, in the case of uh, um, uh, cement mortars and all that water cement ratio is somewhat critical I mean like you know we have a lower cement ratio, but here the objective is to see that there is lot of water available, uh, available to see that it has a mean free path is somewhat higher like there is a water movement everywhere 
and uh, there is that uh, um, uh, flowability also okay, compared to what you see in other cases. Uh, two types of studies are used, the stable studies exhibit less than 10 percent bleed, separation of water from the slurry. Actually what happens is that um, uh, when you add water to the slurry, the possibility is that if you add excess water, it may just uh, be uh, floating at the top that is what we call it bleeding. Separation of water from the slurry is called bleeding like definitely the excess water is there. So, uh, we say that the, the slurry is stable if it does not have uh, more than 10 percent water coming out of it and unstable slurries uh, bleed from 10 to 90 percent of the water prior to setting. So, the way that uh, we try to understand that is also in terms of the uh, uh, water bleeding. When the solid particles and the water are mixed, the solid particles begin to settle out and the water is displaced towards upward. In the what happens that uh, when all these things are mixed, there is a tendency to uh, for the water to come out. The forces acting in the suspension to reduce the settling of the particles are random impacts of the water molecules against the particle, uh, viscosity of the water, interparticle attraction friction. See the thing is in the case of grout. Uh, imagine that you are doing a hydrometer test right you are trying to do a hydrometer test hydrometer test is a simple example of uh, say um, uh, slurry you know so the forces acting in this uh, soil suspension or grout suspension or essentially they are all you know we try to characterize in terms of the brownian motion there but here in this case the impacts of water molecules against particles viscosity of the water interparticle attraction friction so, we also have importance to this inter interparticle uh, attraction because we do not want we want all the particles to settle I mean reach the bottom it is not that they try to uh, form uh, aggregates or coagulates in the, in the process. So, because then we also should see that the interparticle force attraction is inversely proportional to we know that uh, the interparticle attractive forces are proportional to the square of the mean. Uh, free path length between the particles and the other force are inversely proportional to the cube of the particle diameter either reducing the particle size or increasing the concentration reduces the bleed. So, what you are trying to do is that we, we do understand that um, the interparticle forces uh, are also important like you know, all the cement particles are going down you know we are assuming that we are assuming that the cement particles are going down and uh, you have the interparticle attraction is inversely proportional to square of the mean free path length between the particles like you know it is similar to F1, F2 by D square formula right. A simple formula that we know uh, that uh, the interparticle uh, forces attraction is uh, equal to you know F1 uh, the two particles they have two charges or something that is uh, that we know in the basics and also it is proportional to inversely proportional to the cube of the particle diameter. So, that way the uh, reducing the particle size or increasing the concentration. So, either you can reduce the particle size or increasing the, increasing the concentration means it is indirectly uh, leads to that uh, uh, the uh, free uh, mean free path and uh, so bleeding, bleeding means the availability of water should not be much. If it is too much the possibility is that the bleeding is also higher. So, there should be a prop, proper mixing and all that one should do some sort of experiments, uh, trial experiments before one uh, prepares uh, some of this material and uh, as a general rule the Portland cement grout it has a 0.66 is to 1 is a water cement ratio by weight which is a borderline between stable and unstable grout. You can see that this water cement ratio is somewhat higher than what we are familiar which means that you need to be little more you know the the properties like you know viscosity and some of these things are important and it should be able to flow. The grout should be able to flow and fill up the voids that is what it means. Uh, stable slurries are too thick to be used for permeation grouting of all, but the most of the coarse grain soils are extremely fractured rock. Unstable slurries having a uh, water cement ratios 0.6 to 3 is to 1 by weight may be used for permeation grouting which means that 
if you are trying to say that the permeation is an important para parameter for you, go for a somewhat uh, higher ratios like 3 is to 1 um, and then you need to have also the grain set distribution characteristics into consideration. So, the bleeding of these grouts causes channels and open uh, pathways to remain throughout the grout. To eliminate the effect of bleeding on the Portland cement grout, additives are used to hold the cement grains in suspension at uh, water to cement ratios that would otherwise be quite unstable. So, we also add some sort of additive and the most common additive is the water suspension of bentonite. As I just mentioned, we have seen that the bentonite helps a great deal. Like we know that uh, the uh, bentonite has a property of uh, you know it is a more uh, like a repelling agent you know the thing is that the uh, uh, attractive forces are very minimal there you know the there is a, a bentonite particles tend to float easily in water and definitely when you mix with uh, cement definitely it has got very good advantage and even small amounts of bentonite increase in the interparticle forces uh, dramatically and hold the cement particles in suspension like you know, essentially um, what you are trying to do is that the interparticle attractions are uh, I mean th there is a separation actually ok. Typically, element maintenance grout used for permeation grouting has a water cement ratio varying between 1 is to 1 and 2.65 and exhibits zero bleed. So, we have to even say the thing is the, the, prob the problem of the zero bleed is also solved because the availability of bentonite makes it uh, to take all the water and uh, water does not flow that, uh, that easily because of the uh, presence of bentonite. In many cases, it is necessary to grout soil and rock formations having an effective pore diameter smaller than the allowable aperture side from Portland grout. Uh, so, what we should do is that uh, the, uh, the possibility is that in certain formations uh, the uh, it is uh, it is somewhat coarse and uh, the Portland uh, cement grout if you have you know uh, the possibility is that uh, the, the uh, that may lead to uh, some certain difficulties in the sense that uh, one needs to grout them to make them more stable. Say particularly you are trying to talk about a dam structure or the foundation of the dam which has lot of um, uh, somewhat some pore size structure and then uh, the possibility is that you are also having a cement slurry in uh, being used in some of those things. So, the best thing would be that you also st try to stabilize this area. In fact, a lot of applications of uh, the grouting is only uh, are in um, dam construction actually. Uh, there are books on dam, uh, dam construction and grouting alone, just grouting alone there are so many books uh, written, very well written and uh, grouting itself is a very big subject, one, one can do lot of uh, research experiments and uh, it is a big area itself. So, there are different types of uh, you know as I just mentioned uh, there are different types of cements and uh, micro fine cements are also days uh, they are there nowadays in market and uh, they are very fine. So, for example, the type we call it type 2 cement type 3 cement and uh, uh, they could be in the size of uh, 50 microns, 20 microns and all that. And, uh, we do not say the, the we do not uh, prefer too, too much fine uh, size uh, because the uh, possibility is that uh, it may lead to say for example, uh, it small grain sizes very fine sizes the interparticle attraction forces become very large in comparison to the weight of the grain and the benefits of reducing grain size are lost. So, for example, you have to try to balance out the gravity and the uh, interparticle forces. So, you must be able to balance out that it should be able to uh, go to the required uh, destination as a grout. So, the weight is required to some extent the force of weight, but at the same time it starts uh, just getting uh, suspended in the form of uh, a few particles in this uh, grout then uh, the purpose is not served. So, you must be able to th there should be a balance of forces of gravity as well as interparticle forces and that is where the choice of the uh, uh, grout is chosen. I must tell you that many of these things do operate in a uh, you know in a clear way uh, and then one should make some sort of understanding of uh, you know attempt at understanding some of these uh, uh, ideas that are there because what happens is that 
the possibility is that the grout may not be effectively working and uh, if it is not working then uh, you know it is very difficult to repair particularly in grout suppose if it does not work uh, then it is very difficult to repair that is one important problem. Uh, so, I will uh, stop at this stage we have uh, some more information about uh, uh, other things we will take a break now.